YouTube, what's going on guys? It's Mike here and I'm back with another video. And today we've got a pretty cool one. We're doing some plumbing, a, a really cool plumbing project that I've had on my mind for a number of years now. I just never had the application to, to, to execute it in. So today we have that, uh, that application and that is this garbage can behind me inside of the chicken run, which is a brand new chicken run we just built video on how I built this to come out soon. I just have to get around to editing it. But anyway, this garbage can is going to be their watering system, which is kind of unusual. I mean, most people, when you think of a, a chicken run or a chicken watering system, you think of that five gallon inverted twisting top that creates a vacuum and, and disperses water. Those get dirty, they get algae, they get all types of crap. We're going with a new design here and it's combining actually something that they use in the commercial space which are called uh, poultry nipples. And what poultry nipples are is how the commercial chicken farms keep the water clean and fresh for each and every bird. And we're going to be doing that with this garbage can, running some plumbing. I'll show you guys, I'll explain it all shortly, but uh, let's get started. I just want to quickly go over the game plan and then we'll get right into it. So let's do that. Okay guys, so here we are. We, uh, we're in the chicken run now. This is the 30 gallon garbage can that I purchased from Home Depot. I put it on two cinder blocks, so uh, it's all to scale there. You can see that. And then you can see the chickens here. This is their current watering system right now. This is the high-tech water that I uh, invented. Very proud of it, but it's getting old. So, you know, kind of just joking. It's just a little bin with rocks in it. The water, as you can see, gets real dirty and and uh, it's not ideal for healthy chickens. It's, it works for now while the chickens are babies and, you know, they're kind of just like uh, learning, learning, you know, their new territory, their new area. But we want to have them drinking fresh water, especially as the weather warms up. This water is unacceptable. So that's where this thing comes in. And what we're going to do is be adding what's called poultry nipples to the bottom uh, of this garbage can. So you'll see more on that as we get there. But those are going to keep the water crystal clear inside of this tank and, or inside of the garbage can. And also there's no light penetration, so algae can't grow. So... Uh, with all that being said, we have to figure out how to plumb this thing in so I don't have to fill it up with the hose every couple days. Uh, and that's basically what this vid the bulk of this video is going to be about. So um, let's explain what's going to be going on here. So just real quick, I'm running a PVC pipe underground up to this point right here. It's going to come out this way. I'm actually going to come up, put a hose spigot so I can get a hose on this post on the other side of the fence. We're going to come down, we're going to make a 90, and then I will show you where we go from there. It's going to be connected to the hose spigot, which is right there. That's my existing hose spigot, and that's where all the water comes from. So I'm running a pipe underground uh, between the raised bed and the shed here. I'm going to make a 90 and go into the garbage can. That's the game plan. It's going to take some trenching, some, some work, some PVC plumbing, and I'm going to bring you guys along for the whole thing. So let's jump right into this. Alrighty, so we are in the shop right now. I just wanted to show you the parts that we're going to need to do this job. And there's, you can see there's not too much going on. Um, I have some sticks of Schedule 40, the white PVC. These are couplings. Those are going to hold them together. We got some 90s. We have some T's, some different types of T's. This one has, you know, this is going to be the one that goes underground that allows me to get a pipe going up and connect the two underground. Uh, we have a different type of T that, you know, similar but a little bit different. We might use that. Uh, we got our, this is going to be the drain at the bottom of the tank. I'm going to put this on so we can drain the tank out and clean it if we have to. Uh, this is the going to be the water feed. I'll show you more on that later on with a valve. I'll explain to you guys why I'm doing what and all that good stuff. But I just wanted to show you with all the parts here, uh, just to show you that there's really not too much going on and you'll see I'm going to use almost all of this stuff as I go. One thing to note though is I love to use clear uh, primer and clear cement when I'm doing pl plumbing jobs with white PVC because uh, it makes a mess when you get the purple primer and you could see all your mistakes and that's not what we want. So uh, that's one thing there. And then I do have those poultry nipples, which I'll go over more when we get to that point. So let's, um, let's get outside. We're going to have to start digging this trench. That's 
that's uh, step one. So let's go over and do that now. All righty, so the water is off now. Let's see what's underneath here. Let's move some of these wood chips out of the way. And we'll do a little bit of digging to see, you know, how much, um, how much we need to, to dig away and cut in order to get our new PVC pipe underground here. So let's, uh, let's start digging, see what's going on. So, as you can see here, there's a uh, very clear 90 that's going this way. So the pipe comes down, it hits this 90, and goes left, uh, and then it probably takes another 90 and runs that way, which the water comes from that side of the house, on the left side of the greenhouse. So, anyway, that's not really relevant to right now. What we care about is identifying where this was going. And then what we're going to do is cut right here, and we're going to put a T, and then we're going to send a new pipe coming this way. So let me stand up. I'll show you what we're looking at. That's the spigot. We're going to be running our pipe this way. And then right between the raised bed and the, the shed here. And that's going to send us right in the corner where our chicken water is. So um, I got a lot of trenching to do. I got to trench all the way back to this, right in this area. So let's get trenching. I'll speed it up for you guys so you don't have to... Yeah, uh, sit through the whole thing. All right, guys, that took, uh, took a minute to get that done. Man, it beat me up, but it's done. So there's the trench. I'll show you guys the other side. You know, this was the hardest part, getting the trench dug here. I didn't go extremely deep. I went about six inches deep, but I'm not gonna be running this water in the winter. Uh, we don't need freeze protection. I, I turned the water off at, for the entire winter to the backyard, and that's gonna include this as well. So um, just went deep enough that it doesn't become a problem with uh, breaking or you know uh, just seeing it if I'm whatever the case may be. That was the game plan, and it looks like we're good to go. So next step is plumbing. We're going to cut this here and then put a T installed and then run, start running the pipe down and across in this trench. So let's get right on that. Okay, so before we get started in cutting that, that PVC over there, I do want to talk about the tool that I'm going to use. This is a ratchet cutter. It basically has a sharp blade and then as you squeeze it ratchets closed and it cuts PVC really nice. So uh, the wind is blowing guys. I apologize for any uh, turbi you know, turbulence you might hear. So let's, um, let's get in there and start cutting. So it was at this point the wind just became too much. So the audio of this original video is really crummy. So what I'm going to do is just voice over from this part forward until the wind kind of dies down later in the video. But what I'm doing here is just simply cutting uh, the pipe and leaving about an inch of um, gluing pipe, the, the original pipe at the bottom. And this video wasn't really intended to become like a, a plumbing tutorial guide. I'm not a plumber. I'm, I'm an amateur. I just picked up uh, you know, a couple, couple skills here and there, just from what I do for work, and and I am by no means a, a legitimate plumber. So don't take anything that I'm doing uh, as you know, experience plumbing uh, guidance. This is just me getting a job done at home for as least cost as possible. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with plumbing and you want to do something like this for your chickens, maybe consult with a a real plumber. Uh, or you can do it the way I do it and just get the job done. So um, all you experienced plumbers out there, uh, FYI, th this is not um, a plumbing video and I am not a plumber. So save me some grief in the comments. So right now I'm just getting that T installed. Just way uh, I'm, I'm tying in the new plumbing to the existing old plumbing. And that's all this T is really doing. Next, I'm just tying in these couplings for the sticks of PVC that are out in the trench. 
So it was at this point that I'm just adding the 90T in so that we can make this corner and then send a pipe up for the, the hose spigot that we're going to be putting on the outside of this chicken run right here. So this was probably the most complicated part of the job and it really wasn't that complicated. So uh, just going to speed through it. We'll move on to the next step. And what I'm going over right here is just talking about where I'm going to put the hose spigot. I know that the hose spigot is going to go somewhere over here. I do want to strap it up to this wood and make sure that there's no um, play or sway in, in this pipe. So this is going to be my anchor point right to the wood. It should hold it nice and tight. And then we'll work on the inside uh, hooking up the, the chicken water system. Okay guys, so uh, now we're done with the plumbing, or almost done with the, the, the heavy lifting part of the job. We have to now look at the actual tank itself and we need to do um, some prefab to it before we get it installed over onto the plumbing. So first thing I wanted to do was uh, show you guys what I got going on. So this is actually called a, a ball or a float valve, a ball and float valve. And what it does is you screw a big ball onto the end of this rod here. And as the water level comes up on the tank, it'll lift the ball and then thus close the valve. When the valve, when the ball comes down, water level comes down, it sprays water down into the tank until it fills that level up and then closes the valve. So I hope that makes sense. I'll show you in action how it works, hopefully at the end of this video. But um, this is called a ball and float valve and it's actually gonna automate the water level inside of the tank. So as the chickens drink and the water level comes down, this will activate the water, fill it up, and then close it. So it'll, it, it removes me from the equation, which is the whole point of this project here. So um, I'll show you guys how I'm gonna install that. We're gonna have to drill some holes in this thing. But while we're sitting here, I wanted to just explain also what these are. These are those poultry uh, nipples that, that I was talking about in the beginning. Let me give you guys a close up if I can. It uh, basically what they do is this sits in the tank. So like say my hand is the tank here. The chicken comes up and hits this little metal uh, spring inside of there and water comes out and then they drink. And that's how they drink. It, it prevents and if you see, if I push in where the chicken's gonna hit it, releases that little plunger in the back and allows water to flow through. It prevents anything going back into the tank. Water can only come out and into the chicken's mouth. Um, it can't go back in. So, um, this is gonna prevent any of this water in the tank getting fouled or dirty. But I did think about in the case it does get fouled or dirty over time, and that's where this piece comes in. Now, what this is is just a drain. All it is is I believe they call this a silcock or something along the lines, um, or a bulkhead valve. I, I believe that's what they call it. And it's just essentially this piece here. It, it goes inside of the tank on the bottom, and then this screws from the inside right back into place and tightens that against this rubber gasket here. And what that does is it creates a watertight seal and it prevents any, um, any leakage, but also gives me the ability to open the valve here, which is right here, a ball valve that I have installed, and that'll flush water at the bottom. So if I do want to drain this tank, I can. And that's the key. I don't have to take the tank off and, and dump it out and that whole thing. I, I can do it from the bottom. So I'm going to put this somewhere on the bottom here, maybe on the back side. I'm not sure yet, but there's going to have to be a hole drilled here to allow for this. And then lastly, I do want to just bring up one thing as I am putting a, a valve in line on the fresh water coming in on this plumbing that we're doing. Right after the valve, I'm doing what's called a, uh, this, is, this is called a union. What this union and this valve is going to allow me to do is let's just pretend it's all installed like this, right? On, right up against the tank, fresh water's coming from the bottom. I can close the valve, so now the valve's closed, we're getting no more fresh water into the tank, and now I could unscrew this uh, union, just like so, and disconnect the plumbing 
from the tank and the plumbing itself so I can remove the tank or move it or get rid of it, do whatever I have to do with it, replace it, clean it without having to cut the plumbing and then and then re-glue and, and do all that. So this is just a portable way uh, to open it or to, to, to take the tank off of the plumbing without having to demo the whole job. So it's also good to have a shut off just in case something's leaking. One of these nipples isn't right, I need to repair it. It's good to be able to turn off the water right there at the source, do what I have to do, and then when I'm done, turn it back on. So that's what I'm putting there. So this is like more, more of the complicated part of the job is right at the tank. There's a lot of work to do on the tank. And uh, let's get started. The way I want to orient this, this bucket is facing forward uh, with the handles on the side. So in order for me to position this drain valve, that uh, this first thing I'm going to be putting is I want it to be on the right hand side facing away from the yard so I don't see it from the backyard. That's really the idea here. And to do that, I have what's called a hole saw. And that's this tool right here, this gizmo. It's basically just a, a drill bit with a sharp hole saw on the end. And I measured it to fit exactly the size of this hole. See that, how that fits? It, this way it's just slightly bigger so that we can push this thing through the hole, but it's not bigger than our rubber gasket that'll bite the side and then give us our waterproof um, edge there. So let's get, the, let's get this guy in the drill. It is a massive chuck, but I think it's gonna fit. And let's drill this hole right here. Okay, so let's do the exact same process with the ball float valve and just a smaller hole saw, a hole saw this time. But what we're gonna do is we want this to be coming in from the back side of the, the watering system. So we're gonna spin this around and now we would be facing the back. So I'm gonna just drill a hole up top where this is then gonna sit inside of the bucket toward the top and allow the water to raise and empty. There we have it. So now this is the outside of our, you know, plumbing system here. And the inside looks like something like this. And then what I'll do is screw the ball to this and this will be the highest point. So this is a 20 gallon drum. I think I said 30 before, this is 20. And at the full uh, point, I think I'll have about 15 gallons in here. I don't want this thing to be overspilling or ever have the chance to overspill. So I gave myself enough headroom uh, where the water level will only be this high. So uh, that'll work out. I think that'll work really good. So the last thing we need to do to prepare our bin here, our bucket, is we have to add our poultry nipples. So I've never done these before, but looking at these, the poultry nipples themselves, it looks like they take maybe an ha a quarter inch or a half inch um, hole and then they taper up and you kind of, pr I could imagine you press them in and it, it seals itself. All right guys, so if I did some research and I found that these uh, poultry nipples are actually threaded. That means that we wanna add some Teflon tape so that they create a nice watertight seal when we're threading them into our, our garbage can here. Um, and, and if you're not familiar with Teflon, all it is is a tape that you add to threads and it basically, um, stops the threads from leaking and it is tricky to to start especially on something this small so pardon the camera ship here i'm not entirely sure how i can get this on film but basically you want to 
start it and then kind of just wrap one time around all the threads there uh, and that's kind of what you want it, that's a little thick in my personal opinion there too much teflon can be a bad thing but in this scenario we we have to do what we can so um what we're going to do here now is just drill our holes i'm putting six poultry nipples on the front of this bucket this way uh, they all get a chance to drink and i'm not really measuring the spacing i'm just kind of going going with the flow of it because uh they're just chickens they're not going to be looking for the spacing and they just thread right in guys just like that pretty easy you can do it with your hands you don't need any tools just a drill and that shouldn't leak it shouldn't yeah that looks pretty good So I'm just gonna probably go an inch apart and just keep on chugging along the side of this until you know the, I, I run out of space. All right, there we go. We I actually did eight poultry nipples uh, and I didn't measure to space them out. So some are more spaced out than others, but you know what? It's okay. We um, we're just uh, we're gonna ride with it. I don't think the chickens are gonna mind. So poultry nipples are installed, drain is installed, and float valve is installed. So. I guess what we could do is get our ball and we can install the ball to that now and then get this thing finished plumbed in. So that'll be the closed position there. And that'll be where the, the water level sits. And as they drink, when it gets down to this point, it'll engage and then fill back up to this point, which is beautiful. So it'll always have water above the poultry nipples, um, giving good pressure so that when the chickens come and hit it, water comes out. All right, guys, uh, all done. So that's the way it looks. I still have to level it, so I have to tilt the, you know, the, the bl blocks forward a little bit. But that looks pretty good. I like the way it looks. I like the valves. I like, uh, I like it all. So um, now is the moment of truth. It's time to fire this, the water up, get this thing uh, going, making sure that we have no leaks down in our trench at all. Everything's rocking and rolling. Now, one thing to note when you do put in new plumbing and you put in a new system like this, you wanna leave your valves open on the end of the line there. And matter of fact, I'm actually gonna open all the valves in the yard because there could be air and then that air gets pushed with the water and can pop the PVC fittings right off. So we don't wanna do that. So let's, um, let's open all the valves around the yard and let's fire this bad boy on. So I will be right back. All right, guys, leak test complete. Everything is great. We had no leaks. This is actually three days later. Uh, the, the, it started pouring rain, and it really hasn't stopped raining since the, the this video. So I'm glad we did this when we did with all the trenching and everything. But as you can see, it's all patched up. We closed up the ground. This thing's been in service for a couple days now, and it works perfectly. So let me show you what's going on before we close this video out. So. Uh, let me set that down. Here we have the internal. I'll blow some water out using our drain so that you can see this thing come into action here. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Water's leaving the system. Valve turns on. And then when we close our drain, we'll watch this. It'll, it'll begin to fill. It actually might take a little bit longer than we want here, but this will fill, and as this water level comes up, turns off, just like that. So, 
That'll keep filling. I'll show you the valve system back here. This all held up really well. No leaks, which I'm really happy about. Union looks good, so we can take the, the bucket off when we need to. And then the nipples themselves, none of them leak, and they all emit water like they should. The chickens seem to really enjoy them. Uh, they, they drink, they're, they're happy with that. As you can see, we have some action going on right now. And, uh, and that's really the end of the video here, guys. So before the chickens go and attack the camera, um, let me close this thing out. Give me a thumbs up if you like this type of video. If you like this type of a project, a DIY style, you know, a little intuition, creative project here. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I, I do stuff like this all the time. I, I seem to have no shortage of projects around here on the homestead. So as much as I can, I'm going to keep filming and, and bringing you guys videos like this where hopefully you can get something from it as I do. And, and you know, we could all learn together here. So um, thanks again for, for sticking around to this far in the video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.